gaming. Yeah. Uh, the annual Game Developers Conference is underway in San Francisco. The four-day event features developers from all over that meet for workshops, networking events, and roundtable events. According to the San Francisco Travel Association, 17,000 people attended last year's event, but more than 24,000 are expected this year as the event bounces back from COVID-19 concerns. So for more on this, let's bring in Michael Chow. He is the founder and CEO of The Believer Company and a former vice president and executive producer at Riot Games. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having us on. So for our audience that's unaware, tell us more about the Game Developers Conference, how it shapes the games we ultimately play. Uh, yeah, so GDC to me is, is like a pilgrimage. Uh, we all come together to connect with each other, to share knowledge with each other, um, and to sort of embrace the new generation of game developers. It's kind of like a, a one-week crash course on literally anything you want to learn about game development, um, from art to engineering to design to business um, uh, to sort of corporate social responsibility in games. Some really awesome stuff. Um, there's also a piece that's just purely inspirational. Um, my favorite thing about GDC is, is what we call the postmortems. Um, I know that's morbid, uh, but uh, but that's what we call it when we share stories and, and lessons with each other from past projects, uh, good and bad. And these are these are stories that are often hilarious and tragic and moving and wonderful. Um, and and they're really just about our toughest projects in the industry. They teach us how to be better people, teach us how to do hard things. And uh, this part of the conference is really just like chicken soup for the game developer's soul. I think that's really cool because I imagine, you know, game developers for most of the time, you guys are in a bubble, you know, sort of huddled <laughs> down with your group. And, you know, this is also a very, very creative field. And so it can only become more creative when you can have these kind of broad conversations. Um, we should tell people a little bit about the Belie Believer Company, which is, I think, new, right? You guys are sort of, uh, you've kind of collected people from a, other um, companies, other successful companies, and you form this new company. And why did you do this? What sort of games are you hoping to create? Uh, yeah, so the Believer Company is is actually my third games company. Um, we only just launched uh, two weeks ago. Uh, I, we we are sort of united by a desire to bring impossible dreams for players. Um, to reality. Hmm. The focus for us is what we would call next generation open world games. Um, and in pursuit of that, it's a generally difficult endeavor. Um, we've pulled together, you know, we think the the best game developers that that I've worked with in my entire career. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're here at GDC in particular because GDC is a place where we're people who want to do great work come together. Uh, and so we're here to meet amazing artists and engineers and designers and, and others who are really on the cutting edge of the industry. So listen, um, I, I like the words. They're very open-ended though. You can interpret that any in way ways, you want. Yeah. And so as I as you were talking, I was thinking, Vlad knows that I, I love sort of VR, right? And I'm kind of always on my Oculus. My kid is more like a, a gamer on sort of iPad and stuff like that. And she loves these immersive worlds. Um, but I, I thought to myself, you know, you get these expansive worlds when you have a variety of voices. What is this conference like now? As you've gone sort of year after year, are you seeing different types of people getting involved in the industry? You know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about women. I'm talking about black and brown people, just variations. Yeah, so I will say, so the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. It is looking more and more diverse over time. We've been working on it, I think, pretty hard for a long time as an industry. I think that we still have these pockets of underrepresentation, and I think the reason that matters is um, if we want to make the best possible games, we need to have a great and deep empathy and understanding from our audience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to, to use an example of, of what you just described. In the United States, about 20% um, of all video in, video game engagement um, is from um, is from people of color, and that is as as a percentage of our industry in terms of developers. 
we only represent maybe three to four percent of mm. game developers, whereas whereas the audience represents twenty percent of the engagement. Um, if we want to make the best possible games for a global diverse audience, which it is, it's the best and most diverse audience in the world, we have to close that gap. Um, we have been working on it for a really long time. I think this year is the most diverse I've ever seen uh, GDC, um, but but we're still working on it. We still have quite a bit of a gap to close. Um, yeah, in the global player base, women represent, females represent 55% of the global the global gaming audience. Wow. Uh, today, we're, we're at like 15, 16% um, uh, women in the games industry. So like I said, we're working on it. Uh, this is the best year yet, but next year will be better too. Yeah. We'll keep going. Uh, you also worked on a massively successful title in League of Legends. Uh, explain to us how massive the gaming industry is and how lucrative, frankly, it can be for some companies. Yeah, I, so it's often misunderstood. So games is the biggest entertainment industry by a pretty significant margin, uh, bigger than TV, film, music. It's huge. Um, League of Legends is, I mean, so I had an incredible privilege uh, to work on League of Legends. It's my favorite game in the world. Um, it is it's just bigger than you could possibly <laughs> than you would possibly imagine we brought uh over the last time we shared these numbers publicly at riot uh we had we shared that we had brought over 600 million players into the game wow. um over the past rough roughly decade which is you know it's like t twice of the united the, the population of the united states um and on, on sort of a monthly basis we have at least at least half the population of the united states 180 million players um playing our games on a monthly basis um, that's one way to think about it. Another is, uh, so League of Legends is also a sport, um, and there's this really wonderful convergence of of game and sport, video game and sport over the past 10 years, largely driven by League. Uh, and the League of Legends championships are larger than probably most uh, most uh, physical sports uh, championships that that we watch in the United States. For example, um, when we have a, a, a world championships for League of Legends, typically more people watch it than than watch the Super Bowl in the U.S. Holy hmm. smokes. Wow, very cool. Uh, Michael Chow, thank you very much. Fascinating. Hmm. Thanks so much, you guys. Such a pleasure.